दोबारा देखना चाहिए कि उन्होंने किन कल्पनाओं के साथ अपने संघर्षों को आगे बढ़ाया और उस कल्पना के भीतर और कितनी तरह की चीज़ें जोड़ना हमारे लिए संभव हुआ वो चीज़ें आज कहाँ हैं अगर किसी समग्रता के साथ दक्षिण एशिया को दोबारा रचा जाना है जो इतिहास के ऊपर एक कदम बढ़ा सके इतिहास से आगे निकल सके तो ज़रूरी होगा कि हम अपने चिंतन को उस तरह के बिखराव से दोबारा ग्रस्त ना होने दें धन्यवाद शुक्रिया कृष्ण कुमार जी लोक विरसा हमारी आंखों के आगे से गुजरा और जिंदगी के हर हिस्से में प्रवेश करने वाली कला दस्तकारी और धर्म संस्कृति का सर्वांग नहीं हो सकता ऐसी बातें यकीनन हम सबको एक नई सोच की तरफ ले जाएंगी और अब हम गुजारिश करते हैं हमारे आज के कार्यक्रम की अध्यक्षता कर रहे प्रोफेसर एम जे के मैनन जी से कि वो आज के इस यादगार दिन में अपने विचार रखें कपिला जी द फर्स्ट कमला देवी मेमोरियल लेक्चरर कृष्ण कुमार जी द सेकेंड ऑफ द कमला देवी मेमोरियल लेक्चरर्स प्रबीर सेन माई ओल्ड कलीग हु इज द चेयरमैन ऑफ सी सी आर टी Shri Surendra Kaul, now in charge of CCRT, and friends. A lot of what Krishna Kumar talked about poses a dilemma that we have to really deal with. and that is a constant question that's coming up i knew kamla devi ji very well and used to interact with her very closely i learned a lot from her and i want to just mention purely in passing that it feels rather strange to me to call her kamla devi ji because she always told me to call her kamla that's what she was to me and i remember equally another great person who said the same thing to me many years before homi baba who told me to call him homi and not dr baba i have listened very carefully to the issues which were raised by krishna kumar ji in his lecture and i think we have to grapple with them on a very serious basis to me there is the basic issue of many diversities these are the cultural diversity related to education in a principal sense that's what he focused on there is also the whole question of linguistic diversity which he touched upon there is also the question of biological diversity which is a huge area and all these different forms of diversities are under threat today 
we are losing in the mad rush towards globalization and the advance of science we are losing a great deal of cultural diversity because ultimately what it is doing is to create uniformity a faceless rootless society we are losing in the name of progress and the need for communication a lot of language i have spoken about this before to different audiences we don't seem to understand that linguistic diversity and cultural diversity are related to your environment to what is immediately around us for example those who live in the areas dominated by the cryosphere by snow and ice like the eskimos have more than 40 words to define snow we don't have it in hindi i'd like krishna kumar ji to let me have a few words for snow or ice baraf kahenge hum to but they have more than 40 words why because their life depends on it their life depends on it essentially because it depends what the snow is like whether it is hard or soft whether it is heavy or light what the nature of the flakes are similarly for instance if you ask a south sea islander for whom the ocean is his environment or her environment they have a equally large number of words for waves because their life depends on it fishing depends on it existence depends on it when you go out into the ocean so a lot of language is related to the environment around you now i realize and this is a question that i have posed when i gave a talk at the indian international center several years ago called the overwhelming question what happens how do we progress do we progress in order to get development and better life for everybody through the techniques that have been handed over to us by science i pose that question yes we all know and there is a famous saying by francis bacon knowledge is power and therefore power is based on knowledge and education that's what everybody seeks i ask myself in the years when i used to handle aspects relating to the island territories of india the andaman and nicobar islands and lakshadweep 
what is the sort of development that you require for these people if you go and see any one of those islands take the sentinelese and the numbers are less than 100 ongays what do you do do you allow them to modernize and bring modern facilities language development to them or do you keep them essentially as separate from civilization society the rest of it what is it you do because in trying to save what they have and mind you if you go to that island they will not allow you to land again i remember discussions relating to what children want in life what the parents want for the children and this is a question which relates to uniformity ultimately because the value systems in society are such today that you would like the children to have an education which fits them to a career and a career which essentially enables them to earn the way they wish to earn so money has become the be all and end all of all activity and i ask myself whether all these efforts that krishna kumar ji has been talking about will succeed if you do not change value systems now that is a very important question that all of us in society have to face this is what defines ethical issues and i would like to say that one thing that i learned from kamla was the importance of human values and that is what she had learned extremely well from mahatma gandhi because today if you look at it we talk of development and development results in destruction of a whole range of these diversities whether it's cultural diversity whether it's linguistic diversity whether it is biodiversity and yet we request for that same type of development without providing leadership and i believe and that is the last point that i had made in that lecture of the indian national center on the overwhelming question is can we in this country provide leadership of a different nature which relates to fundamental human values because very few today if you go to the schools and ask them will even be able to define what is good and bad what is truth and untruth what is honesty and dishonesty they are not interested all that they are interested in is how they can progress and unless we can change values we'll never be able to solve the problems that we are facing
we have to realize that there are many angles to this. First, the question of the social conscience which must exist in each one of us but which has to be triggered. Krishna Kumar gave an interesting example of a school in South Dakota and of getting a good teacher. I would like to say that the best teacher is one who allows the child to be creative. To be creative through its own efforts. It doesn't matter in what field or discipline it is. Whereas what we are now doing at the present moment is pushing them through one of these machines. It's like a spaghetti machine if you wish to. And you get the spaghetti uniformly rolled out. Instead of that, what you require is a teacher who will allow the child to flower. And he referred a couple of times to my good friend Yashpal. And he has written a book on discovered questions. Namely, what are the questions little children think about? I look at the newspapers, look at the television channels, and what do I see? The most important question that they always ask is who? WHO. Not the important questions which a normal scientist would always ask, which is why? Why not? How? And let me just repeat to you the almost the first nursery rhyme that I learned, which was twinkle, twinkle, little star. But the second line is extraordinarily interesting. How I wonder what you are. How and what come in there. And also the sense of awe, wonder, understanding, of curiosity. I visited many years ago through kind courtesy of Prabir Sen, the earliest of the cave paintings in India, in Madhya Pradesh, at Bimbetka. And I saw the beautiful paintings done by the people when they were not engaged in activities that fetch them their daily life, which is hunting and so on and so forth. And yet I found that they had time to make extremely good paintings, drawings, and produce the colors for it. Similarly, for instance, there was a lecture given on old artifacts, stone instruments of the old period. This is a lecture given at the Indian National Center. And I asked, here is a stone axe. How did this individual decide to make a stone axe at that time? 
that must have been something conceived of in the brain. The totality of it, the environment, the purpose for which the stone axe is meant, and then the design of it, and then the making of it. This is what essentially involves craft and the master craftsman. Therefore, it seems to me that it is not so much a question of only allowing the master craftsman to have a position of importance in the school or in a class as a teacher or a colleague but much more than that it's a question of what are the values that drive society and what is it that we give importance to in our daily life is it money and the things that money will fetch or is it scholarship is it gyan is it Vigyan? And that is the basic question that we have to answer. Gandhiji had answered that long ago in terms of his value systems. But we have to answer it in the new age that we are in. Because otherwise, on an imitative basis, we are just following what exists elsewhere. The whole range of globalization that's come about, development for the sake of development, and what we are always talking about is growth factor. The per capita GDP the number of millionaires and billionaires we have created in the country. We don't ask ourselves how many honest people are there. We don't ask ourselves what do the medical people do who serve society, cure human illnesses and work for them. They are never given any publicity. The only publicity that is given is this nature. Therefore I believe that we have to search for a new way of doing things. For giving scholarship its due respect. For giving creativity. And that is what science is all about. Science is based on creativity. And creativity essentially involves right from the baby upwards. And therefore, I would say that unless we can change our society, this eternal flood from the village to the town, this eternal attempt at development at the sake of all other values will continue. Therefore we have to resolve in our own minds as society and educate people to that that ultimately what matters is values, human values, ethics and the ethical principles that should govern us. So with these few remarks, I'd like to say thank you very much to Krishna Kumar for a wonderful lecture. And I hope that what I've said is also of some use to you. Thank you very much. Shukriya Janab. And we have seen a different thought here. चाहे वो कृष्ण कुमार जी का वक्तव्य रहा हो या एम जे के मेनन का दो लाइनों में इसे सम अप जरूर करना चाहूँगी कि तालीम के इस चमन की हिफाजत करेंगे हम शायद किसी कली से गुलस्ता महक उठे
तो शायद यही एक उद्देश्य है हम सबका भी और अब मैं डायरेक्टर सी सी आर टी श्री गिरीश जोशी जी से आग्रह करती हूँ कि वो यहाँ आए सभी मेहमानों का शुक्रिया अदा करें गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन द ऑडिटोरियम विटनेस्ड द मीटिंग ऑफ माइंड्स द ऑडिटोरियम विटनेस्ड थ्री लिविंग फिलासफर्स स्पोक टू अस एंड स्टर्ड अवर माइंड प्रोफेसर एम जी के मैनन रेस्पेक्टेड डॉक्टर कपिलाबाद सैन एंड प्रोफेसर कृष्ण कुमार आवर मोस्ट वैल्यूड इन्वाइटेड गेस्ट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट्स माई प्रिवलेज एंड ऑनर टू प्रपोज द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स ऑन टू दिस ओकेजन आई ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सी सी आर टी एंड द एंटायर लेट मी कॉल इट द फ्रेटर्निटी ऑफ एकेडमिशियंस एंड कल्चरल एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर्स हेयर टूगेदर एन एंड ऑन माई ओन बिहाफ एक्सटेंड ए वेरी हार्ट इन नोट ऑफ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू ऑल स्पीकर ऑफ टूडेज प्रोग्राम gracing and sharing your important work and sharing with us your intellectual thoughts and opinions today we are deeply honored with the presence of professor m g k menon for sparing his precious time to come to the center inaugurate the exhibition delhi nama which narrates the story of delhi and presiding over today's function being a well known scientist visionary and cultural administrator there is no need to mention here about his area of concerns professor menon has been sensitively responsible to the literary performing and plastic arts a keen observer of life in all its facets we are indeed grateful to professor krishna kumar former director of ncert who so graciously spared his valuable time to deliver the lecture professor krishna kumar has rightly pointed out that handicrafts are perhaps the most representative symbol of india's cultural plurality and we are also agree with his views that handicrafts signify the integration of work and values in context which recognizes the presence of the artist in every human being i may also add that future generations of policy makers teachers and students will always be thankful to you for your painstaking effort in introducing heritage of crafts in school curriculum we are deeply indebted to dr kapila watsain world renowned scholar and thinker in the domain of culture who has consciously continuously supported enriched and guided the programs of the culture your gracious presence today dr watsain at this function is a great source of inspiration to all of us as you must have observed this celebration has the collaboration of equally important activities and i would like to thank professor kt ravindran chairman delhi urban art commission and shri siddharth chatterjee the young vibrant designer for bringing the delhi nama exhibition to the center's complex we are honored and thankful to laila tayyab ji and her team of workers dastkar for bringing colors joy and vibrancy by organizing basant bazaar in ccrt complex i would like to thank all the educationists and artists and scholars who have always provided their expertise and guidance in the activities of ccrt the center has completed more than 3 decades of its existence and in in the short period we have tried to involve artists scholars craftsmen and educationists in fact creative people from all walks of life to share their knowledge and expertise with students and teachers i would also like to express my deep gratitude to them i would also like to express my thanks to the officers of ministry of culture and also ministry of human resource development government of india for their involvement and encouragement in the ccrt activities they have always supported and guided guided programs of the ccrt I would also like to thank the members from the electronic and print media for attending and covering today's function. The entire team of CCRT is very thankful to members of the sister organizations, Diplomatic Corps, and presidents of RWAs of Dwarka to be here 
to encourage us in our endeavor to bring back the inherent enduring values of Indian art. Our grateful thanks are also due to Mrs. Rita Bokil and her colleagues for reciting the invocation and also to Ms. Samina Siddiqui for being the master of ceremony. Our grateful thanks to all ladies and gentlemen who have come to attend this evening function. Your presence today is encouraged and inspired all of us. We are going to experience an extinct intangible form of Dastan Goi by Janab Mahmood Farooqi and Danish Hussain and his colleagues and we are thankful and grateful to them for this honor of performing here in front of us. The center is thankful to the fraternity of teachers and we have amongst us around 100 teachers from 22 states who have become our seniors. And I would like to say, in continuation of Samina Siddiqui Ji's Ganga Jamni Tehzeeb, ki tumhara haath badha hai jay dosti ke liye, mere liye hai wuk yaar gam nusar ka haath, ye haath shah ke gul gulshan tamanna hai, mehak raha hai mere haath mein bahar ka haath. Karein ye ahed, ki ozaar jang hai jitne, انہیں مٹانا ہے اور خاک میں ملانا ہے کریں یہ اہد کہ ارباب زنگ ہیں جتنے ان کو شرافت و انسانیت سکھانا ہے خدا کرے کہ سلامت رہیں یہ ہاتھ اپنے عطا ہوئے ہیں جلفیں سوارنے کے لیے مٹانے کو زمین سے نقش ظلم و نفلت کا فلک سے چاند ستارے اتارنے کے لیے With these words, I again invite Samina to come and thank you very much Thank you